Okay, I don't know why that worked, but ladies and gentlemen, I'm a little out of breath because I just got done walking back to my house. But we're here for JGL. Do playoff watch along. Or not really, it's me reacting to the games. I have tried recording this video now for a third time. Because the first time I did individuals, didn't like it, didn't think it was going to upload. But then I said, you know what? We're going to watch all these games. Because not all of them were played, not all of them were there. And as I was starting to get through the first half, my dad calls me, ruins the video. And now we're back here to try again. So what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of sp speed forward for the first two. Then commentate the last of the games. These are from the divisions from Tornadus to Thunderous to, L to Landorus to Enamorous. That we are doing the order of these games. Now, like I said, every game was not played, but it's my job to bring the people, the JDL, and the people of you, my social crew, the content that was promised. And I am promising these games, so these games are 100% going to happen. So with that being said, let's get into it. So we first off have the only game from the Tornadoes division that was actually able to be shown because of you know the replays. But basically, Chef makes playoffs, Bash makes playoffs, Alphon makes playoffs. So the last playoff spot is up for grabs. We're going to kind of just skip through this a little bit here while I stop my cat from trying to eat my stuff around me. So they don't try to eat my Sharpies, my remotes, you know, the needy things that all cats love. So, and again, if you guys don't like the fight, I'm speeding through this. Like I said, I've already gone through this battle already, and it's, it's just, it's a little annoying. So, I do apologize that I'm skipping through this and not coming. Like, my, God, my cat is now just trying to do side to what he wants to do. With my face and hands. He just wants to decide to mess with me and act like a needy cat. Even though he's mostly a quiet cat. And if he purrs real loud, you might hear him on, str on screen. But with that, you're going to see that Scran is going to be able to pick up a massive a, uh, KO there with the gunshot. And here's again where I think there was a misplay from... Um, Fish here, if they had Ice Beam, they should have clicked Ice Beam there. They could have gave him the KO. Now, obviously, when it came down, the Gunshot lands there as well. But uh, I think there was a point where Slow King was in front of the uh, Okie Dokie. I think, again, if you had Ice Beam, you would always make the uh, play to Ice Beam there instead of Side Shocking. But who knows? Uh, let's see here. Well, they might not have actually had Ice Beam. Mine would have been Skull or Chili Reception, one of the two. Yeah, my cat is really asking for attention, but he'll get it later. He'll get it later, I promise. Uh, up next, we have Kyle's here, which we actually already watched as well. So, again, I'm just going to kind of speed through this. But, uh, yeah, I think Kyle's was really put in a position where he really played this game perfectly well. He definitely got very lucky in this matchup with getting to the Apera on the Quaffle because that really shut down the momentum that Quaffle could have had. Because if Quaquavo was Ice Spitter in this matchup, Quaquavo actually could have had a shot to KO the Zapdos after that boost. Especially if that thing was like Expert Belt or something. But, um, Kyle just really was able to position himself perfectly well in this matchup. Which I think is really, really good. Because again, he just kept getting the momentum. Like, the more momentum he got, the more he just kept getting the opportunity to do what he had to do in this matchup. So, Kyle's just really really knew how to play this game perfectly well. Um, and then again, right here, there's the, this is where Goldango just literally was going crazy, man. Oh, no, no. Right here is when Goldango was going crazy. Goldango is literally just going to click buttons here. And this is where I fully believe that this Goldango was specs. Because you're going to see here at minus two, this O-code, well, not O-code, but this KO'd that Ursaluna and you're also going to see here, but also all these sorts of damage rolls, it is going to KO the Vikavolt. With that damage roll. So this this thing had 100% specs, and he's going to make the safe play here. And at this point, 
Draco kind of had no shot in this matchup afterwards and basically had lost this matchup. So, unfortunate for him to lose the game to a lot of bad RNG there. But also, you got to give props to Kyles because Kyles really, really played perfectly around this game very well, positioning-wise, and just also getting off the damage that he needed with his mods. And again, just finding that opportunity to just get either a KO or chip down something super heavily to where it was not recoverable. So, massive shout to Kyles for picking up the victory in this game. And again, my cat is, again, needing the attention. He will not leave me alone. Everyone say hi to Sneaky in the comment section below. You've seen him before. He's cute. And for some reason, for a cat who's like eight years old, he's being needy right now. But I love him very much. He's a good boy. But up next, we have the last game of Thunderous here. I am correct on that, right? Yes. We have the last game of Thunderous here. The first game with Thunderous right there. Uh, and Oh, it didn't say anything for Thunderous. Thunderous is SJ versus Derude. SJ makes the playoffs. So one of the best mod squads, if not the best mod squad member, being SJ. Then we have um, uh, Lunar versus Neji. Um, Lunar actually makes playoffs, so shout-outs to Lunar as well. So they're going to make the playoffs there, so congratulations to them as well. Up next, we have here Pika versus Slippy. Uh, we were just kind of starting this game, so... Oh, we were just kind of starting this game, so I want to get back to kind of where we're at here. Basically, someone like we saw the tech of the... Uh, oh, we're going to see it right now, actually. And then we're going to see the rest sleep talk Rotom. I think we're pretty much right where we're at here. So uh, rest sleep talk Rotom is actually very interesting to this team. I don't know if I would fully agree with that. And I literally am going to have another train. Why is the train still here? Train was literally during the last video as well. And very unfortunate sleep talk rolls for Slippy here. As uh, Slippy is now going to avoid the crit. Get the rest off. Now Slippy does have to make a choice here of either trying to wait sleep turns later or gain something fast. So the chance he's going to come in here. As it is going to take nothing because it's a chancy. Incomes now up. I don't know if I like that name. But now we see the Avalon. Oh, we're seeing Avalon the Avalon again. We're not even seeing the um, boots on Avalon, which is very interesting. It's Rocky Helmet, which is very interesting in my opinion. I think it's really and they're both Terra Fairy. I find this so funny. Very interested on that switch out there. I personally would not have gone for the switch there. I think if you had taunt, you just taunt on that turn. But now um, this Lord just going to get a wish off. And it's going to probably most likely baton pass into the key train here. Which, uh, the Thunder Wave on Chansey. Now, I personally think a Seismic Toss right there was the better play. Because, as you see, well, if you see 25%, let's go back to that heat train real quick. Before the heat train came in. Where is that heat train at? Uh, I guess if it's 25%, the heat train would have always lived. So I guess maybe going for the Thunder Wave is a fine play then. But I don't know. It's just it's just me. I think that we're... So in comes the now Avalug here as the chance in here. I'm guessing that we're going to see a body press here based off of that. And we're going to see a recover, which is very interesting here. As the floor is going to come in. And now this Avalug gets a free recover off as well. And uh, we're back to the stalemate again. And I'm guessing... Oh, no. The Tinker Tongue's going to come in here this time. As we're going to see the baton pass into the Kruku Delay, which is going to be Intimidate Crook, which is very interesting. It's Intimidate, not Moxie, which means it's going to be a little bit more supportive probably in this match. We're going to see a knockoff here. As we're going to get rid of the Rocky Helmet here on this Avalog here. And in comes the Forces again. There is no drawback there. This Ice Spinner, and that is a lot of damage, actually. That is very, like, wow. In comes the Tinkaton here as we are going to see another Wish here. We're probably going to most likely see a baton pass here. Now we're going to see a hard out into this thing as the rocks come right back up, which is very big. Or rocks get finally set up by the Tinkaton, which now means rocks are here to stay until the switch out happens. So we're going to see a U-turn here as a chance he's more than likely going to go for the size of toss in front of this thing here. And now this is where things get stally. As Pika now is forced to click this, this thing, this whole team is getting paralyzed. So if Pika doesn't have aromatherapy, he's in a very big trouble here. As he is not going to reveal to have the aroma therapy. Wow. Which means now this whole team is getting crippled slowly but surely by a Chansey. Of all things, a Chansey. Which is... Okay, we're just going to go ahead and just skip. Okay, so the Crook came in with an Intimidate here. The Avalago doubles out into here. So now this thing gets three Thunderbolt off here. Or a U-turn, preventing the, the chance to come in. Yep, the chance is going to come in. Now, in comes the Urban Strike. It's always oh, Rapid Strike. I thought it was Single Strike at first, but it's just Rapid Strike. We're going to see this thing come in here. 
I don't know what we're going to see. We're going to see a U-turn here. Very interesting U-turn play as Thunderous comes back out here. And I think we're going to see another U-turn here. Or we're going to see a Thunderbolt, one of the two here. We're going to see another U-turn here as now in comes the Urban Shoot Rapid Strike, which is very interesting because that's a rest sleep talk roll here. He's going to the U-turn here. That's looking like banded. That is 100% banded. As we're going to go ahead and see the roll into Hydro Pump. Rotom getting a little bit of justice on that roll there. As we're going to see a Thunderbolt here as the Rotom's going to hopefully try to bank on getting another Hydro Pump. Unfortunately, he's going to get rest, and he's unfortunately going to die to this Thunderbolt. I do think sacking the Rotom, even though it looked like it was probably a bad play, I think I can understand why he would, because, again, you have to get this in comfortably against something. But obviously with things like uh, Urship, which can probably revenge it, the Crook, which can probably KO it, and even arguably the Fortress as well, I do think potentially sacking the Rotom there was, a, was an actually okay play, because I think you didn't really lose anything from sacking it. Where, you know, saving it when it was 30 HP. Because, again, you have to get that sleep talk off in order to make it sure it was going to still be healthy. So, I actually don't think I disagree with the play of sacking it there. But now the pole comes in. Pole gets to claim pretty much a KO, probably. As we're probably going to see a Draco Meteor or a U-turn right here. And we are going to see the Draco Meteor. It's not going to be Specs. So, this pole is very interesting here. As we're going to see the Avalok come in here. We're going to see an Earthquake, which is going to be able to 2 a KO this uh avalok here but we're gonna see the oscar come in we're gonna see an earthquake and do a lot of damage is that banded holy crud in comes the meow here we're going for the knockoff here as it's going to go ahead and get rid of the heavy duty boots of this thing as avalok's gonna come in here live on that we're gonna probably see a rapid spin kill no we're actually gonna see this come in as avalok is going to take the earthquake here and unfortunately rocks are now guaranteed to stay up for the rest of this matchup um, definitely looking back at the turn there, I don't know why you would sack, not go for a rabbit spin in front of the Meow. You always take anyone hit from it, and you revenge it. I guess they were trying to maybe catch the Tink, possibly? I, I don't really know. But I think you always spin in front of Avalok there, so, I don't know. Bit of a weird play in my opinion, but we're gonna see, we're gonna see a Leaf Storm! We're gonna see a Mixed Meow Scarada! And he's going to knock out the Hissune Avalos. So rocks are guaranteed to stay on both sides of the field now. As TNT is going to come in here as we're going to see a U-turn. And now we're seeing Pika starting getting that going here. But now, unfortunately, we'll sack off the Crook as it does die to rocks. But now Luka is in. And Luka gets a quick KO here. It actually is liquidation. So... That's very interesting to see liquidation. Is there a reason why does liquidation not affect something that we're not knowing here or i'm guessing liquidation to avoid helmet or i i don't really know but uh we're going to go ahead and see the heat trend come out now this heat trend is actually very hard for slippy to make some plays around but I, if i know anything with slippy's team here i'm guessing what that one move is on dragon bolt yeah it attacks as the hacks is going to knock out the thunderous which is now pretty much kind of useless in this matchup but it didn't really have that much of a drawback here in comes the Ting a ton. Are we going to see the aggressive ice punch? Or are we going to see a read right here? We're going to see the surging strikes, which actually reads to be dual water stab in this matchup. Very interesting. I think you just surging strike here again, as there's no drawback to clicking it. As you swapped out here, they are going to click the surging strikes, and they are going to pick up the KO on the Meowth Scarada. Very good play by Pika there, as the pole's going to come in now. And at this point in time, you really need to keep Urshifu and Heatran alive together, because they're your best wing cons going to this matchup now. So now this pull. Is going to go for that. And on four, Oh, we're going to see a wish. And the risk for the protect. Wow. Now, I'm not going to lie, Pika. That was very, very risky. But if I were you, I honestly would have gone for the KO on the pole. I think you always go KO on the pole because now they're going to go hard. Tinkaton here. Keep this thing healthy. No, they're not. That was a bit of a misplay on Slippy's turn there. I think you always go Tink then. Force either a knock, a gigaton hammer, or whatever, or a potential play rough. I mean, yeah, you have this right here, but then you can just double back into the pole. So I don't know if I agree with that play, but at this point in time, though, Slip Pika has now put themselves in a position to now where they basically win this game. And they are going to baton pass, which is definitely the safest play possible, and they should theoretically be able to pick off this game here. As they're going to close combat, most likely choice bandit, and they're going to pick up the victory against the Slippy. Shout out to Pika, though. He had to really position himself very carefully around that, especially since this team got so much great momentum movement going into him, and he had to really play around the momentum. He had to unfortunately make some very unfortunate sacks to his team, 
But Pika was able to rebound and able to pick up the victory. So massive shouts to Pika for that victory. So with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into the Landris division now. Our first game of Landris division is going to be my boy Cam taking on Saw Khan. Khan, very much opponent that I knew and uh, recognized back in the day. So we're going to see the teams here. We see Sneasler, Weezing, uh, Slowbro, Torn, uh, Grafia, and Zorark versus the Vikavolt, Lenad, uh, Gallus Loking, Reggie Drago, Ursa Ruining, and the Azuma Rill. So let's go ahead and get into this matchup. I think I'm going to play on uh, normal here. Oh, hold on. Wow. No. Stupid music audio. I hate it here. <laughs> so we see Lenata. He's going to go for the U-turn here, which definitely reveals to be Scarf, which is very important there. Knock off onto the uh, Glory King, which is going to actually break the Cobra on it. We're going to see an Ice Beam here in front of the Tornadus here. We're going to see it then a pivot on the U-turn, which is really, really good there. In comes the Slow Bro. As uh, this is going to be a very interesting turn here. We're going to see a Toxic here from Cam, which is a very interesting set here from Slow King. Uh, I've seen this set before. It's actually a very annoying stall set, but it's a set that definitely puts in a really good amount of work. So we're going to see a Taunt here from the Grafai. As we're going to see the side Shot, Cam making the prediction on the potential Prankster Grafai. As now we're going to see the Ice Beam here. We're going to see the Balloon pop, and it's, oh, it's going to be a Zorark! Which probably then says that that is most likely either going to be a balloon on the Sneasler, which I don't know if that's a thing that could possibly have it with item change, but who knows. But now we're going to see that this Urs this uh, Urs ring is going to get guts and is going to just spam facade now. As there is no safe switch into facade on this team, and Cam is just basically. Cam is not. Cam actually gets the heart out there into the slow bro. Well, not into the slow bro, but we're going to see Colin go into the slow bro. I'm moving too fast. <laughs> Let me calm down a sec here. So, potentially the Sneasler is Air Balloon. Potentially, because of the fact that this copied it. Unless, you know, it is both Air Balloon because they were fearing the ground coverage, maybe? I have no idea. But uh, we're going to see Weezy now coming in on this thing. It seems to get Ice Beam. And now Cam can kind of just fire off a side Shock for free. There's no downside to doing that. As they are going to make the second of the Weezy. They're actually going to Ice Beam here. Very interesting play with the Ice Beam here. But then comes Diddy here, and now again, the additional party shot here again. I have to make the 50-50 here on the side Shock or on the Ice Beam here. They are going to get the Ice Beam here. Zorark is back out again. And a very good play by Cam going for the Ice Beam. They were able to catch that. And we're going to see a Shadow Ball. Very interesting to see Shadow Ball from Zorark when it's a Dark type and it can learn Dark Cult. Very interesting. I guess Shadow Ball was there to catch off potentially something that Cam had that I don't know of. But also wants to be able to take on the Sloking just so a Colbert was a thing. I, I have no idea. But we're going to see a Liquidation come off with the Slow Bro as Rocky Helmet Bro as it always is. We're going to see the Double Out into the Ursa Ring as now again Facade Spam is a thing. There is no safe switching to Facade. And the Slow Bro is going to be decimated. And I personally think that, that was a little bit of a misplay there. I think I would have gone for the KO there. But in theoretically you're basically sacking off Sword with KO on the Ursa Ring. So slow bro goes down. Big dragon energy is here, baby. As we're going to see a parting shot here. And in comes the Tornadus. As we're going to see Draken, dragon energy. And this is the reason why you draft the dragon type, ladies and gentlemen. He is goaded with the sauce. He's scarfed. Doesn't realize it. Zorok's going to go down. And at this point in time, the... Oh, we're going to see a double out here by on um, uh, Cam there. Very interesting double, in my opinion. And now he just goes a free side shock here, and I think theoretically that's a wrap. Yeah, man, side shock was such a solid bring by Cam there because it was able to shut down the Grafai uh, taunting there, and also again, side shock most likely being a special move that hits more on the sped on the fizz depth than sped depth really provided great offense. And Cam played phenomenally well. Cam got great positioning, made fantastic reads as well in this matchup. So Cam definitely earning that victory. Very much a shout out to Cam there for picking up the W this week. I believe one game in the non division we're not going to be able to see is Lost versus not Zodiac. Zodiac actually picked up the victory against them. So massive shout outs to Zodiac for making it into the Lanod playoffs. Up next, we got everyone's favorite clown, especially mine. I love you, Obo. <laughs> we got my boy Obo taking on the underdog, if not the MVP of JDDL, Crab himself, the man that can get a KO with a cup food, cup food during a speed tour tournament. So uh, Owen Hare has dual ghost. 
dual ghost here, which is going to most be... Oh, my God. Owen. Stop with your session with Mimikyu. Like, I like Mimikyu. Don't get me wrong. He's great. But you have a weird session with this Pokemon for some reason. But, but Galar Zapdos and the Thunder... What, what's with your dual typing? Why, why are you doing this to me? Why, why are you bringing dual typings into a match like this? Vezidipity and the Mammoth Swine versus Crab's team, which is the the um, Electric Terrain team of... Oh my god, this is actually terrifying Electric Terrain team. Thank god I don't have to fight this. With the Iron Valley and Jugu and Raichu, and then the support of the Rotom Wash and Titar. I'm not gonna lie, Titar, random bring to this matchup, but I somewhat see why, but again, random bring. So we're gonna see this, and we're gonna see the um, Thunder stuff here. We're gonna see a big Thunderbolt here off of Owen, off Rip here, and we're gonna see Dog... Oh, I don't get the name and I don't understand it, but okay, Crab, you do you. And oh my god, Owen going straight for the Focus Blast, not caring. Definitely a very fine play by Owen over there, just to go scope for it. I mean, you might as well. And then go for another Focus Blast. Get a crit, big, massive crit right there. I personally think here, uh, what Owen should have done right here is he should have kept Thunderbolt. If Thunderbolt was in range to potentially kill, I would have gone for the Thunderbolt there. Or if anything... If your boot's on this thing, go for the Volt Switch to get out there. Also, can we just shout out to Crab? He's got the weird gender, like, weird gender name theme going on here. So, you know what? Shout out to Crab. <laughs> but, uh, definitely think Owen making a little bit of a misplay there. I think he should have either just Thunderbolted to bait the para. Because I think Thunderbolt probably most likely kills this T-Tar. Because he most likely his max HP was mostly Spadef, but again, I feel like a Thunderbolt, if a Focus Blast without a Chopper Berry was able to do a little over 70, like around between 70 to 80%, I feel like a Thunderbolt most likely would have picked up the KO. And now it was at least a roll. But a Thunderbolt also picks up something potentially switching in, which is like if Raichu comes in, you know, there's that. And uh, so there's that. But I really think the Thunderbolt was there. I also think it maybe could have saved the Torn. Also, Owen, why were you not Thunderwave? Owen, wh why are you already throwing the game? Like, oh my god, dude. Just to clarify, everyone, I'm actually not, like, ripping into Owo. It's just a funny joke that goes around with our friend group that we give Owen, aka everybody, Obo, because we have two friends that are named Owen, OG Obina and Obo here. Owen, we just give him so much shit. But it's all out of the kindness and love. You know, like, if you can't give shit with your friends and you can't take shit from your friends, then you're not real friends. I'm just saying that. So, Owen knows that I love him. He knows that. But my god, Owen, come on, man. But we're going to see now the Mimikyu coming in here. And why... What, Owen, stop doing these weird player names. I can't understand the references. We're going to see a Terra Blast... Ooh, that was a cool Terra Blast animation. We're going to see the Mimikyu now. Uh-oh, going for the burn. Is he going to get the burn? Is he going to get the burn? No burn. Plus two Terra Blast now. Should mean two. He's going to pick up the KO. In comes Jugu. Definitely the smart play there by Crab. In comes the Sneak, which actually do about 25%, which is really good damage. And Owen throwing his Terra Captain away once again. We do see the uh, Mammoth Swine comes in. We see Ice Shard. Very interesting play by Owen there. Which definitely now tells Crab that he's not Scarred, which I think is a little bit there. Now we're going to see the uh, Feather Zippy come in. We're going to see the, this thing come back out here. We're going to see the Voltage. We're going to see a will o -Wisp. Very smart play by Crab. A magical, very, very good play right there. And we're going to see a Hydro Pump on the following turn and knock out the Mammoth Swan, which now pretty much means Crab is about to pretty much just body Owen. And this thing's going to live. And a set up Electric Terrain. The backup Electric Terrain from, from Crab. Phenomenal prep from Crab right there. Wow. Solid play by Crab there. Built to be able to take a hit from Spectre and be able to set up that terrain. Crab definitely picking up there. But now Crab's kind of in a big tough spot here because, um, well, if he's not Specs, this could be bad. Unless you're Scarfed. Hurricane. God, that did so much. Um, very interesting to this. And then all oh, the sh like, Shrunkly, what the heck? We're going to see Electric Seed from the Raichu. Now, unfortunately, the Raichu is not going to be able to do much here. Now we're going to see a free Nasty Plot here. Encore and a Nasty Plot here. But the problem is this Raichu slower. Unless it's max speed. Shadow Ball. And it's going to be able to take the hit here. And I'm not going to lie. Owen, 
You had Mudshot. Why did, well, I guess Mudshot doesn't kill, but he gets the minus one. Oh, oh, is throwing. It's confirmed that he froze games. I love you, Obo. Please don't change, man. We have Fezzy Dewey coming in here. Fezzy Dewey can probably live one hit. And you'll be able to get the KO here. No, it's bad. This is why this mod sucks. What? Owen. Owen. Why? 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 What are you doing? Are, why are you purposely throwing the game here? Also, why didn't you trailblaze? You could have been faster. Oh, I guess that this comes in its hard scarf then, right? And, oh, wow. Wow. My boy, Obo. You were stuck. Why, Obo? Obo, you hurt. You're hurting my head, man. You, you hurt. You know, I'm, I'm gonna walk, go away from the game so he doesn't hurt my head anymore. I'm, I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> but yeah, GG's though to a uh, crab though. Definitely played that game perfectly. Had phenomenal prep into Obo, and Obo just got really overwhelmed by it. I think Obo definitely made some misplays though. That he definitely. I mean, there was still a shot he could have lost that game. I mean, won that game, but he lost once he let that Thundy go down. Once that Thundy went down. Um, he didn't, like, he, he, like, didn't have the opportunity he could have done. I also think he tarot away too early with his Mimikyu. I think, you think if he didn't tarot his Mimikyu so early on in the matchup, uh, Jugu would not have been that big of a problem. Um, it could have possibly lived, well, it could have then still been a roll. So I guess there was no real loss in that, but still, I definitely think Owen could have played a little bit better around the Jugu, though, but, is this, but now we're going to see... Uh, I know that's enamorous. I know that one's enamorous. I believe this is Lanod. No, 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 no. This one is enamorous, I believe. I believe this is the last Lanod game. If my memory serves me correctly. No, 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 no. This is enamorous. All these should be enamorous now, actually. Because I remember there was three games, I think, that we looked at. Yeah, there was three games we looked at. So yeah, this is all enamorous now. This is all enamorous now. Ha <laughs> ha! Brain power works when I want it to. <laughs> but we're gonna see here the fiendish bliss taking on Smite Smash Smash. I don't know how the heck I'm supposed to say your name. S Master Smaster. I don't know. But looking at these teams, we see a pole Iron Hands Yum Mega Go Away notification bar, Amoongus Cresselia and a Delphox versus a Talon Flame Meowskaretta Iron Shred Iron Shred. Great Tusk, Fezzidipity once again, this mod sucks. Iron, <laughs> we see uh, Berserker and Goldango. Very interesting matchup. A lot of dual typings across both sides of the board here. So very interesting to see how this match is going to go. So we're going to go ahead and get into this right here. We're going to see the Miascarada into the Delphox lead. Very interesting to see this. We're going to see the double out, which is going to reveal that that Delphox is 100% Scarf. Which is very good information for Fiend to get here early on in the matchup. That is the Scarf Delphox. Very good information to get very early on in the matchup here. We're going to see a will o -Wisp on the Amoongus switch. As we're going to see a Toxic here. Chaining the statuses. In comes the Delphox here. We're going to see a U-turn. In comes back the Great Tusk here. Great Tusk is going to come here. And we're actually going to see a hard out there. Very interesting play there. I guess they were baiting in the Psychic move there. But in fairness, the fire move was kind of simply free as you only have like one real switch in and one defensive switch in. But now the crest comes in when this means now this is a guaranteed free knockoff here for the Meowserata. No, it's going to go for the U-turn actually. Very interesting. But we're going to see the Rocky Helmet on Moongus. Goldango's coming in here. Now Goldango can kind of just do some things here. We're going to see what though. We're going to see a Shadow Ball here as that is definitely an Assault of Vested Iron Hands if I've ever seen one. In comes Great Tusk. We're going to see the Earthquake. Fair safe middle ground play right there. We're going to see the Cresselia come in here. As we're going to get the knockoff here with the Great Tusk. Another Rocky Helmet off of the Cresselia, which is a massively big. In comes Goldango as we do see the Moonlight here. And again, I think we're just going to see a free Shadow Ball here. And we're going to see another 21% points of damage. His hands is slowly but surely getting played. We're going to see a play off predicting the Tusk and or the Meowskarada. And unfortunately, he's going to catch that burn. Which is definitely going to make these Iron Hands now very useless into this matchup, which is very unfortunate. We're going to see a Wild Charge. Now they're starting to get to a little bit of the over-predictions here. As the Iron Hands is now going to watch out as the Goldango is. Goldango now gets a free Shadow Ball off on anything here. As it is almost going to be able to pick up a 2 AKO here. As we're going to see another Shadow Ball. And gets a crit! Oh, massive crit right there. Now, obviously, it was not a... Um, 
It probably wasn't dual screens with the Rocky helmet, but that is a massive knockout right there. As that crit was 100%. Um, gonna guarantee, like, I feel like the crit was probably gonna be a roll because of, you saw the normal damage being 41%, with then being another 41% because it's normal damage with the crit. Um, probably was potentially a roll with that crit, but that is very unfortunate. With that crest being gone now, no screen support is really huge, and also one of your best great tusk answers is now gone, which great tusk now looks very threatening to this team. Sorry if you heard my cats messing around with some stuff in the background. They're making loud noises for some reason. But now we're going to see the dragon. Oh, I'm clicking the wrong buttons now. We're going to see the dragon ball come in here. And this is a free dragon answer. This thing wants to just start doing things. We're going to see a wisp, actually, which is very interesting. And we're going to see a hex here, which is not going to do anything. This is the only one good thing Fezzidipity has going for it. And that being its bulk. But now Meowskarada comes in here. Meowskarada can pretty much just click, click a free knockoff here. As, no, it's going to be another double out into the Vezendipity here. Very interesting on that turn of play events here. So we're going to see now the Delphox come in here. As we're going to see a Roost. And now we're going to see what this Delphox wants to try to do here. As we're going to see the Mouse Grab a Pivot. We're going to see a Psy Shock. Bank the very aggressive play of just going and attacking what's in front of it. Very safe play though. Can't really blame them. I personally would have probably gone for the Fire move. As there was no real switching to Fire move besides the... You know, potentially Fezzidipity if it's really that bulky and also the Talon Flame. But Talon Flame is taking damage slowly but surely, and I think you would want to build up that toxic damage. But we're gonna see the Amoongus come in as we are gonna now see a knockoff on the Oscarada as we're gonna lose that Rocky Helmet on the Amoongus. And now we're gonna see if this thing is not gonna be a choice card for Banded. As we're gonna see a free U turn here. As we're gonna see a sunny day. Very interesting play here. As now we're gonna see the Iron Hands come in here. As the Shadow Ball now it has a chance to potentially pick up a 2 KO. Actually, no, it pretty much now guaranteed 2 KOs, regardless of any variant in our hands is going to go down. As now we're going to see the Delphox, Box, and now we're going to see a free Fire move here. There's no reason not to risk the Fire move here. As the Flamethrower is going to pick up the Great Tusk. I think that was definitely the smart sack right there, because Great Tusk really didn't do anything else. It didn't really help against the Omega, the Pole, or the Delphox, and the Amoongus. So definitely think that was a smart sack right there, as it wasn't really doing anything else for you. And it comes to Festivity, which is actually going to take a bit of a chunker right there. And now we're going to follow see the swap. We're going to see the Dragon Bolt come in here on the Sludge Bomb. Very interesting play right there. And now Pult Pult's likely going to go for the Hex right here. As now we see the Meowskarada pivot in here. And ew, big crit back right there. As we're going to see a Citrus Berry. The random berries here. We see a U-turn and unfortunately got a knockout there. That was big right there. I don't know if they were if they didn't have sucker if they didn't have sucker they weren't expecting that I don't know if they were making aggressive speed creeps for pulp but pulp always guarantee will always try to outspeed the fastest thing on your team and go from there as someone that's used pull I've made that same mistake so unfortunately though it benefits them over me because I was the one that lost they were gonna potentially have a chance to win because of that but very unfortunate to lose that Meowskarada because that Meowskarada was very big because it was a really good check to the Amoongus once it switched its typings. But in all honesty, it would have been probably used as a sack piece later on to the matchup unless it had Sucker Punch. If it didn't have Sucker Punch, um, it was really one of those mind games. So if they had Sucker and they made the prediction, they made the wrong 50-50, but you know what? That's just how it goes sometimes when you run Sucker Punch, and that's one of the reasons why I hate running Sucker Punch. I hate playing 50-50s in my head. It's so annoying. We're going to see the Berserker come in here as we're going to actually see a swap out. See the Terry Fairy into the Shadow Claw, which does absolutely nothing. We're going to see the Fezzidivity come back in here. So we're going to see the Sunny Day pop up here again. And we're going to see some Fire Delphox now, apparently. As the Delphox is going to come hard in with a Sludge Bomb. Get that poison. Now, if I was them, I probably went right back into the Pult, possibly. And either just try to get damage off of Pult. Pult can't necessarily win the game now and your delphox which is your scarf mob probably is your best win condition into this matchup so i personally think you either gotta potentially either sack off this or try to keep it healthy maybe or go into the pole and just get damage off of pole i definitely think that was a little bit of a misplay because now this thing gets chipped and there's a side shock which is so much damage but now you're going to see the side shock so they're going to make the easy play into the goldengo here and that thing is just going to chew ahead here. And I think at this point in time, Fiendish is going to pick up the victory here. As they're going to set up a nasty plot here. And uh, unfortunately for them, unless they're going to click recover here. If they got recovered, smart play. Yep, they make the recover play. 
Delvox is going to go down, and at this point in time, it's probably just going to skew you right here. We're going to see the Hex, as is revealed to be the Cassive Berry here, and they're going to pick up the Knockout here on this Dragapult. Yeah, Mega's going to come in here. It's going to tear ground here, try to go for the KO, and they're going to get the KO here with the Terra Blast. And their Speed Boost. Very interesting they went Speed Boost in this matchup, but we're looking at what splits left. I personally think Tinted Lens was probably the better bring or something, or if you got Rock, well, obviously you could have Ancient Power, but you have Ancient Power here. But Tinted Lens would have been really good in this but we're going to see the Berserker take the Air Slash of the Citrus Bear, and they're going to see the Iron Head here, which is not going to get the KO, unfortunately. We're going to see a Terra Blast here knock out the Berserker, as now the Fence of is going to most likely be forced to be brought in. Oh, the Talent Plants they come out here, and they don't reveal to be Ancient Power. That's F points. That's F points. Come on. Come on. Where, where's the Ancient Power, Young Megas, people? Come on. We're going to see a Brave Bird, and unfortunately not pick up the KO, but it is going to pick up the KO because of the burn. And with that, the Omega is going to come out here now, and this Omega is going to click Protect on the Roost from the Talon Flame. And I think it's going to come down basically to the Air Slash versus the Brave Bird here, and Air Slash is unfortunately not going to pick up the KO. And with that, Fiendish is going to pick up the victory and move be the first one to move into the playoffs for Enamorous with massive victory here for Fiendish. Big victory for them this week. And they definitely played around this team very well. I definitely do think the big misplay from Smaster here was letting this Delphox fall into a Sludge Bomb to get a basically 60% chance to get poison from Toxic Chain plus Sludge Bomb. I definitely think you I should have just gone Pult and had just gone whatever damage you could have gone off Pult as this was definitely the win condition in this matchup here. So I think that was the only misplay I really saw. Obviously, the unfortunate crit there on the Cresselia also prevented from being able to be used later on in the matchup to set up screens or keep it healthy. So, definitely a little bit of luck on Fiendish's side, but I think Fiendish played this team very well. Definitely a little bit of weird some plays here and there, but definitely made the smart plays they needed to do, and they actually walked off the victory. So, very so massive genius to them. Up next, we have Sagem versus Nice versus Amy, or Nice versus Nanny. Nami. I don't know what the words are going with here. But we've got here Zapdos, Hydreigon, Hippowdon, randomly. Um, Palafin, Sylveon, Hisuian, Zorark. And when from nice from Amy's team, we see the Glaceon, the Azel, Gliscor, Milotic, um, Magnezone, and the Garchomp. I'm seeing Gen 4 OU right now. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and get into this matchup here. Almost done. We have the hip here. We see a steel beam. That specs 100%. And we see the ground type going bye bye. So now we see the Hydreigon here. It is sub nasty here. Is it sub nasty Russo? And then we see the draining kiss from the Milotic. Massive bring for it with Amy there. As well, we're going to see the flip turn as well into the Azov, into the Calm Mind Sylveon, which looks definitely very interesting. This we're going to see the explosion. That's 100% banded. We see the Palafin coming in and out here. We're going to see an Outrage from the Garchomp and a massive hit there. So either this is a Adamant Chomp or Jolly Chomp enough to outspeed the Hydreigon, or this is like Max Speed Zapdos or Scarf Zapdos, one of the two. But holy crud, these two teams just mollywopped each other with these attacks. But we're going to see now the Garchomp here. We're going to see Palafin. And we're going to see the Shadow Ball, which reveals to not be Palafin. It's Zork. And also, look at that shiny. That shiny in animation is actually looking so dope in Showdown. Why it took forever to get this? We're going to see the Zorark. Now, I won't lie. I don't know if you should have gone Zorark there. I feel like the Palafin one should have been more safe to play. Just go for the Jet Punch. And then, well, I guess if it's Rocky Helmet, you can kind of go from that reason why you would want, want to risk it. Because then it reveals the chip damage. But, but now... Go away, notifications. But now realizing this, you can take advantage of it. The Glacian's going to come in. It's going to tear steel here and chew that hit. Go for the Ice Beam. That specs. That specs. That's 100% specs. As now we're going to see the Magazone come in on the Wave Crash, which they're going to sack the Magazone, which makes a lot of sense. Magazone doesn't do anything else when you match. My load comes in. And, oh my god! That banded Palafin. Oh dear god. In comes the Glide Score. We're going to see the Wave Crash here. Very smart to play around the recoil of that there. We're going to see the Ice Beam. It's Scarfed! It's actually Scarf Modest. It has to be Scarf Modest. And we're going to see the Glaceon clean up the game. Wow! Glaceon getting three KOs in this matchup. So shouts to Glaceon. One of the best evolutions. Definitely with Terra has gotten so much better. 
but man, is it forced to do some things to be able to do good. That my Lodex set was really good. Definitely smart play though from uh, Amy here to really get that that uh, thing whittled down so much to the point that Ice Beam actually was free to be able to click in this matchup because probably Freeze Dry was a potential roll if not didn't gain guarantee the Oko on the Hydreigon after that sub damage. So definitely smart playing around there by Amy to be able to get that chip damage that they needed for the Palafin to go for Ice Beam to be able to punch up it again with the speed. So GG's to them. Very well played. Now these two games I did already watch, so again we're going to kind of skip through it. I am going to make a little bit of note on some plays though that I am very confused by. So we're going to go from that. Okay, can we... I know I clicked music off here. Don't want to ask for you to make noises here. What the heck? What the heck? That's weird, but all right. So we see this play here. Um, from that, and it comes to Jirachi, which is going to actually have enough speed to outspeed and actually Oko this Hoopa, which I'm not going to lie, very surprised by that play. And I guess it's something I actually didn't note the first time around when I watched this. You should always, always never stay in because more than likely than not, this, this thing's always going to swap out. And you always got to fear Scarf Jirachi. Every time you face a Jirachi, you always fear Scarf. Even though you saw a U-turn, you might have thought it was defensive. You still need to switch out because, again, it can always be built to possess faster than the Hoopa and then run the rest into its HP and defenses, whatever it needs to be in. Now, here's one of those plays that I'm very confused about between Potatoes and Barry here is that they willingly just basically sacked off their Weavile in front of this Annihilate, which I really don't understand when you have a Tox Apex. But be fair, Tox Apex basically gets sacked off. Mandibuzz essentially just dies if that doesn't take a hit. Now, obviously, if you want to make the read with Drain Punch, you can go Spectre and basically be able to pick up potentially a KO. But I really don't understand the sacking of Weavile. When Weavile, if you really look at this team, Weaken down, this kind of just KOs with knockoff or crash. KOs with crash, maybe with a little bit of chip. KOs with crash. Knockoff it can KO with, and if it's SD or not. Uh, just needs chip and knocks off with the knockoff. This later on, if you got chip, can be knocked out with actual crash. We've all end game looked very, really good in this matchup, so I, I really don't know if, what I agree with that play. We do see them sack the um, Iron Tredge, which I personally think maybe it was a bit of a misplay there. Because Trez actually looked really good into some of the mons. Like it was faster than this, this, and this. So Earthquake, Spin, potentially could have Spin for chip damage. Earthquake to Revenge. I really think actually now looking back at it, because I didn't even think about it the first time around. I think what you should have done is either I just sacked off the Annihilate, because I personally don't think it's going to do you anything else in this matchup for Green, personally. Or had sacked off the Eel, but Eel kind of does do a little bit more to what you want, so... But now the Enamorous comes in here. Luckily enough, the mascot, or one of the trash mascots for this division, because let's face it, Enamorous Therian sucks, is uh, going to be able to do it there. But now we're going to see here, and we're basically going to just see flinch turns. And this is where I think Barry was getting very, very, very just like not making his plays count here. He kept trying to get nasty plots set up for this mod to really be able to do some damage off. And on the turn, the Jirachi U-turn or hard out or something like that, he went for the slack off instead of going for the attack. Because if he went for the side shock or the scald, could have potentially put this thing in a range to either KO or not, and then just freely scald again. To either KO this thing or kill it with a burn after the haze. So I definitely think uh, Barry really, really played around the uh, Jirachi talk effects there. Very wrong. I definitely think he made some misplays there. So again, we're going to skip this here just because it's just nonsense with Jirachi. And now I'm going to come in here, get that U-turn chip here. As the Mandibus comes in here, very good play to bring the taunt on the Mandibus so it can be kind of shut down here. As we're going to see that this Mandibus is very much defensive enough and actually has enough attack investment to basically bring down this Annihilate into toxic range where it dies from poison. So very good prep rare. Again goes this Kamo, oh, and Kamo was basically going to be able to clean up this game here because it's going to set up a Dragon Dance here. He's going to take that side Shock very comfortably well from the this thing here. As If they're going to predict potentially the Dragon move or anything, we're going to see the Shadow Claw knock out the Enamorous. And at this point in time, Kamo was going to pretty much clean up this game. 
as he's gonna click Shadow Claw here again, even though I think he could just click Dragon Claw, which would have been better, but he probably didn't have it. But at this point, Kamo is gonna basically pick up the victory here, and uh, with that, uh, Potato is gonna be able to pick up this victory and move on to the semifinals of the Enamorous Division. So massive shout out to Potatoes. Do you think they played a little reckless with the Weavile and a little bit of kind of bad positioning? But they definitely got played around Barry very well. I do think Barry really was misplaying with their slow bro and kind of not really picking their sacks accordingly and just making some generic mix plays. But you know what? Everyone's going to make those misplays and make those um, faults. You know, all you can do is just learn from them better and uh, come back strong for the next lead or for the next season. And uh, with that, we get to our final game being Chin Mao versus uh, Flapple here. Again, another game I already kind of watched. We're going to fast forward here. As we're going to see a really cool Akka set here from the Ticket Time and actually get rid of the item. So, my guess is they specifically brought that to either live and be able to revenge this thing somehow, or to do that and get rid of the item on it so we can prevent the potential Scarf or Specs or something like that. But also, look at this. This thing could be so good if it wasn't so trash. We're going to see a fire set here from Flapple, though, as he's going to be able to Oko this Rotom with the power of Solar Beam here. Iron Balance is going to come in, and again, you don't want to run booster energy if you can't find the position to do so. Because now Shadow Claw is going to come out, he KOs the Tinkaton, but now Sneasel is going to come in, Dire Claw, which you should have feared Scarf, which I think that definitely was a massive misplay when you had a Steel type that baited it in, and plus it would have confirmed if it was Scarf. So now these. Okay, come on. Ian. Now the Mew comes in as the Gujra comes in. It is going to get Will-O-Wisp, which is massively huge for that um, Gujra to get crippled because now Body Press is literally non-existent. As it's going to have Summer here again, we're going to see the Switcheroo here, which was a fire bring by Flapple here to bring Scar Switcheroo with the, the need to also, also have pivoting with U-Turn to be able to have a set that can guarantee get damage off or can just basically design to do so many things. For what it needs to be doing here and basically we're gonna oh what the oh i clicked the wrong button that's why we're gonna see this and we're gonna see here the tech endeavor kill a watch roll in front of the umbreon basically lure that umbreon into there so where you can be able to trap it with an endeavor and basically be able to pick it off with anything else in free turn here they decided we'll see there just get the momentum and now we get an overheat off here which is gonna knock out the corviknight here but now they're going to go into the Chi Yu here. Chi Yu should be built to be able to take this hit. And unfortunately, that's going to open the door for Chi Yu to get that side there. I do think, again, more than likely, you either go into your Blood Moon, which can always take a hit, and save the Infernape, because Infernape then basically beats this and this, and it can just win you the game. But then you kind of just sack it here, which I don't know if I agree with this play, because then you're risking potential flinch. Uh, this basically dies. You're basically gonna flinch or crit there. But now in comes the Mew, which should probably live a hit here, but it's gonna get critted now. I do think the crit possibly matter because if it's timid, which most likely it's gonna probably be timid in this matchup, unless it's modest. I mean, if it's modest, it might have still been a roll, but the roll was heavily in their favor. But it was timid, even without Culver, possibly was a roll, and it was a roll that was somewhat favorable for Flapple to live. But we'll never know. But this came a big turn right here, but they're going to get the Earth Power off here and are able to pick up the victory here. And they're going to be able to go for the Earth Power here again in front of the Gudra. Gudra no longer has its Shuka Berry, so he can't take this hit. Gudra needs a crit to have any chance to fight back, but even then, Sneezer is going to win the game. So with that, Flapple is going to pick up the 2-0 victory and take the final spot in the Enamorous Playoff Division. Now, I was not expecting us to do all the games in one stream for the playoffs unfortunately but due to the fact that i wanted to be committed to you guys and the fact that again some of these games were not all the way done and could be uploaded because of this i'm just gonna go ahead and just give you all the games that we did so going into next week i'm going to make sure i write down who's in the semifinals and who games are what in their division so that we could be a little more professional and I'm sorry if I kind of did kind of rush for this video. Again, I tried recording this video several times and being interrupted, um, being called during the video, and just not being able to get it done properly. It just takes a lot out of a guy, so I have lost some of my energy. So I'm going to probably pick one random mon to be the uh, thumbnail of this um, video. 
But uh, with that being said, that has been the round one of playoffs. Again, to all the coaches that I did announce, they are there. But uh, next week, we'll be seeing the playoff matches of the semifinals of the JDL coaches. And we're going to be seeing what kind of intense games we're going to see. Hopefully, some phenomenal prep and some phenomenal plays. But with that being said, I'll see you guys next week. Until next time, guys, I'm Phil Shock and I'm Ted Shock. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.